The New York Giants are now 3-1 and one on the season. Big Blue with another dub on Sunday as they bounce the Chicago Bears at MetLife Stadium 20-12. to 12. Joining me from MetLife Stadium to break down the Giants' Week 4 victory is New York Post sports reporter Ryan Dunleavy. Ryan, how's it going for you? Good, Dex. The Giants are 3-1, and one, which means anything is possible in life. Anything is possible. Giants winning three of their first four games. Now, before we get to the play of the G-Men on Sunday, some injury concerns for Big Blue. Daniel Jones, Evan Neal, and Tyrod Taylor all exited this game. So what are you hearing about the status of those players? Yeah, it's not just those three guys. It, the Giants, uh, my, my count, I think 10 different guys had injuries in this game. Uh, Ojolari, Thibodeau, Manjo, Galladay, on and on and on. Uh, look, no, we don't know the statuses of any of them. Some came back. Jihad Ward came back in the game. Uh, we don't really know the statuses moving forward to any of them until we see them on the practice field Wednesday. But the focus really, Dex, is the two quarterbacks. I mean, Davis Webb better have his passport updated because there's a legit chance he's the number one or number two quarterback Sunday. Tyrod Taylor's in the concussion protocol. That's going to be tightened by the NFL after what we saw this week with Tua Tagovailoa. So there's no guarantee he'll be back. And Daniel Jones, by all indications, though no diagnosis has been made, it looked to the naked eye like a high ankle sprain. That would be his third in four years. And each of the last two times, he's missed two games with those. So there's no guarantee they'll have QB1 or QB2 available on, on Sunday in London. No guarantees. We could see Davis Webb under center in London. That will be interesting. Now, the Giants' offense, they really dominated on the ground today, led by Saquon Barkley's 146 rushing yards. Not a lot in terms of the passing game this week, Ryan. So what are your takeaways from Big Blue's offense through the first four games of this season? It's almost impossible in the year 2022 to go to the 44-second mark of the first half without one of your receivers touching the ball. It's such a duck receiver-dominated league. But the Giants did it in an old-school way in their old-school uniforms with offensive line clearing holes, running backs, tight ends. It was old-school 80s football. Uh, they ran for 262 yards. I mean, it, the only takeaway you could possibly have is Saquon Barkley is as good as ever, as good or not better than his 2018 rookie year just looks absolutely dominant and the Giants need it because they don't have much of a downfield passing attack. Now Ryan you said at the start of this conversation anything is possible now with the Giants the best start for the Giants in quite some time some fans might be thinking about the playoffs so how good can this team be the rest of the way? Here's what they're doing, Dex. They're, they're maximizing their talent and they're taking advantage of opportunities. And that's to the Giants were the team that bad breaks went against for five years. Uh, they're not a great, it's not a great roster. I picked them to win four games before the start of the season. They're going to win more, win more than four games. I mean, they are taking advantage of every opportunity. They're well coached. They play hard. They know what to do in situations. Nothing catches them by surprise. And after the Packers and Ravens do very hard games, they have a really soft stretch of the Seahawks, the Lions, the Texans, the Jaguars. I mean, yeah, you can dream about the playoffs. Seven, eight, nine wins is certainly possible the way the Giants are playing if they keep beating all the teams that they're supposed to beat, which is what they've done. We will see how the Giants finish out the season, but it's a good start. Three out of their first four games have been wins. Keeping Ryan happy, keeping Giants fans happy. Anything is possible, like you said, Ryan. We shall see. That is Ryan Dunleavy, sports reporter for the New York Post. Ryan, thanks for joining me. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me.